I don't see what all the, 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 the big deal was after all. And uh, what it is is I, I want, to, want to basically start at, at some basic mathematical principles and, and, and work uh, my way up to um, introductory calculus. Um, certainly things like, like vector calculus and that I'm not really going to get into, um, but just basic calculus, what is a derivative? Uh, what is integration? And uh, perhaps how do we use some of those, those basic concepts and, and how people use those basic concepts in the day-to-day -day life? And um, I just want to give a little history. And I, I know that I really haven't talked about history and, and, and I'm not necessarily a big... Um, uh, academic formalism kind of guy. I'm, 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 I, I consider myself "quote unquote" ghetto, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean that that um, even though I can get a little wordy in my videos, I really look at the, the concepts um, that are, that are intuitive, that make sense, and that really allow uh, me to um, qualitatively and quantitatively make sense of the world. And I'm not necessarily interested in all the. The, the, the formalisms and, and, and so on and so forth, and sometimes I make up my own formalisms in, in some of the mathematics. It's certainly not conventional, but as long as you understand it and you can use it to make sense of the physical world and obviously, you know, pr prosper uh, as, as a human being and, and so on and so forth, that, that really should be the goal. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to focus... Um, on, on this, because this is uh, such an important part of history, believe it or not, of, of the human condition, of human history. And I just want to take you guys through this. So when we talk about, um, not necessarily ancient, but when we talk about the, the evolution of humanity, you know, it, it really, and obviously I'm not a historian, but when we look back at it, you know, really the big advances um, of human culture, of of human history, of human growth, of uh, 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 it, it, it technological advances, you know, major periods of time uh, were always marked um, by um, a new way of viewing the world in a in a quote unquote a scientific scientific um, type of type of, of, of aspect. There, there were um, technical ideas that really um, enabled humanity to move forward. And, you know, you look back, you know, thousands of years and you look at um, cultures such as um, the Egyptians, you know, what did they have going for them? How were they able to do these, these feats? And, you know, they, they had, obviously they had a very, you know, written language. They were able to catalog, um, you know, they, they obviously had mathematics, uh, you know, basic forms of mathematics. Uh, you look at the, the ancient Greeks, for example. Um, that's where a lot of what we call Euclidean or flat geometry came from, what was from Greece, from the ancient Greeks. Um, the Pythagorean theorem. Um, Aristotle, some of the, the Greek philosophers. Aristotle, for example, is very important in, in respiratory care because you know, he actually took um, animals and, and sealed them in, in hermetic containers. And while certainly um, probably not the most ethical thing to do, he realized, hey, these animals died. And there was something about them being sealed in these containers. And, you know, we, we had these, uh, you know, basically experimentation. You know, how do I experiment and how, you know, what, what sense can I make of the physical world? And then, of course, we had the, the, the fall of the Greek and, and ultimately the Roman Empire. And, and, you know, we went into, you know, what they call the Dark Ages. And, and that's kind of where, you know, we had the, the Crusades. And we really lost the scientific way of looking at the world for more, uh, what I guess I would call esoteric views of the world. And I'm not going to get into religion. I'm certainly not saying that, that religion is bad and all that. I'm just saying that, uh, when we only have one view of the world that doesn't necessarily take into consideration, you know, what we actually see, what we can actually make of the world qualitatively, quantitatively, that's what we get. We, we fall into these, these dark times, um, and obviously, there's a lot of debate about where we're at right now um, in our evolution as, as a race. But anyway, we'll say that for different days. So, you know, during that time, believe, you know, believe it or not, it was actually, you know, Persian and um, it was Persian and, and Arabic philosophers that kind of held on to these beliefs and, 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 and kept them from dying out. And then when we transitioned into the Renaissance, 
the Renaissance literally means kind of an awakening, an enlightenment, if you will. And when we transitioned from the Dark Ages and the Renaissance, that's when we started, you know, we had people like Michelangelo. And, you know, that you probably remember the Vitruvian Man um, drawings and, and so on and so forth. And that's actually what we use as a, as a symbol for our respiratory um, class of 2011. You know, there's this awakening and this reemergence of, of science. And, of course, we came out of the Dark Ages and started progressing again. And during this time, after, you know, the Renaissance on, there was a very important person, historically, scientifically, probably one of the, if not the most important people uh, in the world. Um, and he, he's, a, he's a gentleman from England, goes by the name of Sir Isaac Newton. You know, uh, what I learned in school about Sir Isaac Newton was he is a dude that, that uh, discovered gravity because an apple fell on his head. No, no, it is much more profound than that. So Isaac Newton was born in, in, in I believe, January of 1643, died March of 1727, so he lived 83, 84 years, lived a long time for someone of that period. Um, what did he do, though? What did he do other than, than apples and gravity? Well, yeah, gravity, but what he did is one of the things. He did many things. Um, he was uh, one of the first people to develop a practical reflecting telescope. Um, he, 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 he looked at light and described some of the properties of light and even wrote a book called um, Optics. Um, he looked at planets and how they orbit, and um, he actually developed um, the laws of force that we know that we still use today. Even though we're, we know they're not accurate uh, when we consider quantum mechanics, they're still good for most things. Um, he uh, experimented on himself, um, just did uh, all kinds of incredible things, but what he really did. Um, to describe all of these things was he came up with a, a new way of thinking. He and a couple of other people, he gets into, ended up getting most of the credit, um, and he came up with a new kind of mathematics known as calculus, the math of change. And, and it is that mathematics that ultimately, um, that ultimately was in probably one of the greatest, one of the greatest books of all times, period, um, in my humble opinion, and that is the Philosophia Naturalis Principia Mathematica, or the Principia Mathematica, is the um, Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy. Um, I believe it was published in 1687. This book revolutionized the world, period. And basically what it was, what is it was a foundation of all classical physics. Calculus, classical mechanics, the force laws, Newton's three laws of motion. Newton back in 1687, when that book came out, was able to describe what we do today when we launch an aircraft in orbit, how planets orbit um, the sun, um, bullets, trains, cars, all of that. And ultimately, those laws, those laws and those principles um, were used to usher us into what was known as the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial, industrial Revolution was a technological revolution, an advance in human history, in human society. You know, that's when we talk about trains. So we talk about um, rudimentary automobiles, mass production. That really was um, the turning point for humanity at that time, pushing us into an industrial way of living, and we have never gone back since. <clears throat> that started around 1750. He died in 1727. Within 30 years of his death, those principles were used to push us, to usher us in, to the Industrial Re Revolution. And then, of course, around um, the mid-1920, uh, 1930, we went into another revolution because of qu the quantum mechanical theories that, that were developed. Um, and that has brought us into our present um, age with uh, microprocessors, uh, computers, um, GPS, things of that nature. So when we talk about this stuff, this is profoundly important. It's, it's the reason that, you know, I'm here, for example. Probably a lot of us are here and doing what we do, knowing what we know. Very important. So I think it is very important that we pay homage to that and we at least appreciate some of these principles because we still use them today. Calculus is used everywhere. It explains a lot. And calculus is still the, one of the fundamental mathematical principles used in things like quantum mechanics. 
So I, I think it, it is important that we at least have an appreciation for it. And that's what I plan to do over the next several videos. I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you.